دكتور تفضل شو عن الكويز الأربعة شو هيكون شابتر 2 بس يس yes. خليني هلا انا باي ذا اند اوف ذا ليكتشر بحكي اي ويل توك اباوت ذا كويز اند سم اذر ستاف اوكي تمام اوكي بكون معظم الطلاب اجوا ان شاء الله اول رايت طيب اني كويستشن اون وات وي ديسكاست لاست تايم دكتور بنفع اسالك سؤال على اخر مثال اعطتنا اياه بدي احله منا ايش هو؟ اللي طلبت منكم تحلوه؟ لا 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 احنا اخذنا مثال انه I don't care وبيكون انه product of max term صفر واربعة هلا لما اجينا نطلع انه على الماب الاصفر صرنا نحكي انه عم نطلع اف برايم ما فهمت ليش؟ هو انا مش متذكر اذا بتقدري ايش هو الفانكشن كان؟ اه كان انه product of max term اوكي اف اوف وات؟ ايه صفر اربعة لا لا اعطيني الفانكشن انا هني عم بكتب اف اوف هاو ماني فاريبلز اه اه اوكي فهمت قصدك سريع ثلاثة اي بي سي اي بي سي اوكي برودكت اوف ماكس تيم صفر اربعة زائد صفر اربعة فور دونت كير تاع اثنين ستة سبعة اثنين ستة سبعة اوكي فهذه كانت هاي الماب This is a map This is for F and uh, the function is A B C so we have max terms at 0 and 4 so these are the max terms which are the zeros don't care 2 6 uh, and 7 all right ال- ال- what is required is to find the um, POS for F right mm-hmm. so we need to combine zeros we need to collect zeros so we can say we can take these together right this is what we did to find the product of max terms we, we combine the zeros then we take the complement uh, to find it now with the presence of the don't cares we can combine them like this right uh-huh. so what is this square this square is f bar equals c bar so what is f f is c okay what's that yeah sarah oh jenna 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 you are yeah i'm in general as far فبوجود don't cares لما يكون عندي don't cares I can assume them whatever I want such that uh, I make my prime implicants larger so in this case this don't care when I combine them with the zeros uh, effectively if I substitute 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0 in the function expression I should get this to be 0 this to be 0 however this will be one because I did not assume it to be zero. تمام. هاي نقطة مهمة إنه because I think uh, one of the students also sent me an email asking about uh, what I ask you to do the example uh, and I told her there is one important thing that I stressed last time that you don't need to do the two cases for example assume x equals zero assume x equals one. You just try to make your prime implicants larger by using whatever don't cares you can use. You don't have to assume all of them to be zeros and do a solution, all of them to be ones and do another solution, then you pick the best one. Of course, when you assume x to uh, a value to be, uh, to ma- that makes your prime implicants larger, you will get a better expression. You will get a, sim- a more uh, optimal uh, uh, expression okay so now okay. let's try uh, what is the value of f when the input is this two in other words a is zero b is one and c is zero what will be the function f what will be f as when the input is zero one zero 
انه كل قصدك انه بتكون اي بي انه اي بار بي سي اي بار بي سي بار يعني قصدك مش فاهم السؤال يعني احنا وجدنا اللوجيك اكسبريشن تبع الفانكشن مضبوط وات از ذا فاليو اوف ذا فانكشن وين ذا انبوت از زيرو فور اكزامبل اور وين ذا انبوت از 1 وين ذا انبوت از زيرو ات از زيرو 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 سو اي از زيرو بي از زيرو سي از زيرو سو وات از ذا فانكشن ذا فانكشن ويل بي سي ايكوالز zero so the function will be f equals zero when the input is zero when the input is two which is which is i don't care zero one zero what will be the output what is the function value i just substitute this this is a this is b this is c this is what 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 is meant by this f is a function of these three variables so i just substitute the binary values of these to get whatever I have. So 0, 1, 0, if you substituted an F, and F is basically C, what will be the function? F will be 1, right? F will be 1 because C is 0, sorry, F will be 0 also, because C is 0, so F will be 0, and this, it's consistent with what we did here. We assume that this x is zero, which means it becomes a max term for the function when we combined it with this, these two zeros. Now, what if we uh, uh, take this? In other words, if the input is seven, what is seven? Is one, one, one. This is a, this is b, this is c. So what will be the value of the function? One, one. One, one. So this x, according to my expression, becomes one, and these two x's, according to my expression, become zeros, because this is what I did, right? Uh, when I combined these two x's with these two zeros, I implicitly um, assumed that they are zeros. This, one, this x, I did not combine it with any zeros, so I implicitly assumed it to be one, and this is what I got. When I assumed it, when when I assumed uh, two, this is two, this is four, this is zero. This is I don't care. This was I don't care for the function. When I substituted it here, I got f equals zero, which is true because I combined it with these two zeros. However, when I input, sorry, this is seven. This is seven. Yes. When I input seven, which is one, 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 A, B, C, to this function, I get F equals one, which is this, because I did not combine it with the squares. Okay, this is very important. The value of the don't care, there is nothing called don't care. This is a binary function, so its value is either zero or one. So when you input two, you will not get an X. You will either get a zero or you will get a one, depending how you combine these don't cares with whatever on, is on the map. If you combine it with ones, then the function will be one, or these don't cares will be the ones. If you combine with zeros, then this don't care, these don't cares will be zeros. All right, so uh, let me go back to the, where we left you last time. I gave you an example and I ask you to continue to do some other stuff on this example. Okay, the red color is bad. Okay. So the example that I gave you last time was uh, f of, I think, a, b, c, d was sum of min terms 3, 4, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15 with don't cares sum d 1, 4, and 6. 
right? This was the last example I gave you. Doctor, but some of the midterms three nine eleven. The two are the same. Three nine eleven. Ah, the second nine. Four. Nine. Yeah, here, what are they? What are they? What are they? Don't care. Don't care. They are one and four and six. One and four and six. Is it right? Some of the midterms are nine. هذا تسعة؟ اه كان تسعة يس اكيد؟ انا هيك انا هيك نقلت ما بعرف الصراحة انا هيك عندي تمام انا كمان عندي هيك اوكي فكان مطلوب منا نسوي مجموعة اشياء وي ونت تو سمبليفاي ذيس فانكشن اول شيء وي اسك يو تو دو ات از سم اوف برودكت مضبوط؟ يس اوكي سو وات واز ذا انسر؟ أنا طلع عندي A B plus B B bar B. okay خلينا نسويها على السريع. okay so this is the map. this is the map for F. this is A B, uh, B C and D. so it is uh, the the ones are three, nine, uh, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15. Right? The don't cares, 1, 4, and 6. Was what? Yes. Oh, tamam. Tamam. We want sum of product of F. So we collect the ones. So this is a prime implicant. And we can take this as a prime implicant. Of course, there are other prime implicants. We have this, and we have this, right? But these dashed ones are not needed because if we start with the essential prime implicant, we can take this one, okay, and this one. So what is this one? It is A, B, or this one, which is B bar D, right? That's what we got last time. Okay, so uh, what about POS of F, product of sum of F? Product of sum, then we need to work with the zeros and find the SOP for F bar. Then this is F. Take we then we take the complement. So this is this. It is the same map x one x because it is the map of F one one and these are the zeros. So because we want the POS of F. We need to combine or collect the zeros for F. And these are the zeros. So we can take this. And we can take. This is also a prime implicant. What other prime implicants we can define on the map in terms of zeros? We can take. We can take this one with this one, right? These four together. And we also have this prime implicant. All of these are possible prime implicants for the SOP for F bar. So which one to use? If we take this one, we cover these two zeros and we if we take this one and we have to take this one because it is essential and we have to take this one because it is essential it is the only one containing this zero right it is the only prime implicant containing this zero so we'll take this one which is what is this one f bar is a bar and b or this, which is B bar 
d bar. So a f will be the complement of this, which will be a or b bar b or d as a product of sum f as a product of uh, sum. All right. So the important thing here, uh, we have multiple choices. We started with the essential. And if we do that, we cover all the zeros. This one is an essential. So it covers these two zeros. And this prime implicant is also essential. We cover all uh, these four zeros. So we covered all uh, the zeros. We don't have to cover all the don't cares because we are working with collecting zeros or combining zeros we only need to combine to cover all zeros for example we did not take this one don't tell me that this is an essential prime implicant it is not it is not essential prime implicant uh, you cannot say it is an essential because because it, it is the only prime implicant containing this don't care we don't care about don't cares okay we need to cover either all the ones or all the zeros of the function under consideration, okay? So what about, I think number three was, um, uh, P -O, uh, or S -O -P of F bar. Here you go. This is the SOP of F bar, right? We already did it here. This is the SOP of F bar. How about POS of F bar? How to find the POS product of sum of F bar? Complement yes, we, SOP F. yes, we already have the SOP of F, right? This is F. So if you take the complement of it, we have A bar or B bar ended with B or D bar. So this will be, so you don't have to draw the maps again, because you already have the answers. But if you don't have the answers, this answer and this answer, of course you have to fill the map and do whatever we did here, okay? So uh, there is one more example on the slides, uh, if you want to check it uh, on the don't cares, okay? But the idea is straightforward. You need to keep in mind that we don't have to cover all the don't cares. These don't cares, we can assume whatever we need as ones and whatever we don't need as zeros or vice versa, whatever we need as zeros and the rest uh, are uh, ones, okay? Any question? Yes, of course, of course. Yeah, but this will be the long way to do to go. يعني oh, okay. you have to be يعني smart انك تشوفي ايش اسرع طريقه تسوي فيها الشغل اوكي تمام اول رايت بس دكتور كيف طلعنا البي او اس اوف اف بار بي او اس اوف اف بار كيف بنطلع البي او اس لاي فانكشن آه مين بيسال كان فخر آه فخر هاو كان هاو دو وي فايند ذا برودكت اوف سام فور اني فانكشن ريجاردليس اف ذس اف اور اف بار وي كومباين ذا زيروز of this function. If we are talking here about f bar. If we are talking about the zeros of f bar, the zeros of f bar are the ones of f. And we already combine that and we find the SOP for f. If you take the complement of this, the SOP will become POS and f will become f bar. It is the same trick we did here. To uh, find the POS for f, we found the SOP. For f bar, then we took the complement. Okay, so it is the same trick. Uh -huh. It is only what is the function? Is it f or f uh, bar? 
All right. So we will see more examples on using the don't cares when we go to chapter four, where we will design um, uh, logic circuits or logic functions. We will find that some of the systems that we will design, uh, they may have don't cares, whether the function is not defined for some inputs or some inputs may never uh, occur. Okay, so we, we, this is how we define the don't care conditions, uh, which are two cases, whether the function is not defined for some input combinations or some of the input combinations may never occur or may never uh, happen. Okay. Any question? So, uh, uh, as I said, the K-map is very important. We will use it in chapter four, chapter five, and chapter six to design uh, digital systems of diff the, uh, different uh, types. Um, uh, all that you need to do now is to practice as much as you can uh, on, uh, on how to use this map to simplify fun uh, logic uh, functions. Okay, so let's go to the last thing in this, this chapter, which is uh, something we covered most of it in chapter two, but uh, we will talk a little bit, we'll give more details on some of what we discussed in chapter two. Uh, here, other types of gates. We already had a similar section in chapter two, where we talked about new types of gates. We talked about, if you remember the NAND gate, right? We talked about the NOR, NOR gate, right? We said that these two gates are universal gates that can be used to implement uh, uh, other gates, which are the AND, OR, and NOT uh, uh, gates. Uh, uh, we said that these two operations or gates are not associative, so we need to be careful when we build gates or we will want to perform an AND operation between more than uh, two inputs. We need to, or we, when we need, we, we want to perform no operation between more than uh, two uh, inputs. So this, these are the logic symbols for these two gates. And we said we can, we can draw something like this. Which are three input nor NAND gates, but this is not equivalent to this. Right? This is not equivalent to this because the NAND operation and the NOR operation are not commutative. So they, they are not commutative. How to do this? Usually we use uh, three input and then we complement it. So this is part of what we discussed in chapter two. So uh, please go back to chapter two and check the details uh, about the NAND and the NOR gate. In chapter two, we also talked about two other uh, important gates, the XOR gate and the uh, XNOR <coughs> gates, if you remember. So we said uh, the XOR gate is basically a logic uh, uh, operation between two variables or between two or more variables. The logic, the, the mathematical symbol is a circle with a plus inside it. The XNOR is something like this. And this is defined as XY bar or X bar Y. This is defined as XY or X bar Y bar. Right? We already saw this in chapter two. We also listed the, the properties
properties in chapter two, right? We already did that in chapter two. So, uh, uh, and one important property for these two operations was that the XOR is commutative, is associative, while the XNOR is not associative. So, we cannot build a three input XNOR by simply doing something like this. The same problem we had with the NOR gate and the NAND gate. Uh, while the XOR is uh, commutative, is associative. Yeah, there is a problem with the, yeah. The Sura is not. في تأخير بالصورة. Sometimes, okay. Um, so the XOR is associative. The XNOR is not uh, associative. So what what we want to do to discuss here is something related to the KMAP, especially with these two. Uh, 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 operations. So that's why, uh, let's say, this is other types of gates revisited. So if we look, if we start by the XOR, and specifically the two input XOR gate, we said XOR means exclusive OR, which means that this, the, the, the output of this operation is one if only one of the inputs is one. That's why it is called exclusive. However, there is, there is a more general uh, description that can be given to this operation based on uh, some ob uh, observation. So this is XY bar, X bar Y which is basically sum of min terms uh, one, two, right? This is a min term, this is a min term, which is sum of min terms one and two. If we draw the map, this is x, this is y, this is min term one, this is min term two, and it is clear from the map and from the logic expression that this cannot be simplified any further. And it is clear from the min terms that this function is one when only one of the input variables is one. Okay, now let's consider the three variable case. Let's consider the three variable case for the XOR. Now let's consider x exclusive or y exclusive or z. If you try to find what is the logic expression for this function. So we will say, let's say, we said it is associated. So if we take these together as one unit, we XOR them with z. So we have x exclusive or with y and z bar or x exclusive or with y bar and z right this is how you do it this is the this is imagine this is this as one variable then this ended with this bar or this bar ended with this so what is x exclusive or y it is x y bar or x bar y ended with z or this is uh, um, x y bar or x bar y ended with z bar right this is complemented here so this will become x y bar z or x bar y z bar or essentially this is the complement of XOR, which is XNOR. So what is the logic expression for XNOR? This is, it will be XY or X bar Y bar Z, right? 
So I don't have to take the complement of this, then uh, do the algebra, because I know this is XOR. Complement, if you take the complement or the nut of XOR, it becomes XNOR. So if you XY bar Z or X bar Y Z bar or X Y Z or X bar Y bar Z. So this is the logic expression as a sum of product or essentially this is a sum of min terms because the function is three variables and each of these n terms contains the three variables. So what is this? This is min term zero, one, zero. So this is min term two, or this is min term, min term two. Is this min term two or min term? I five? This is min term five. It is one, zero, one, if you remember. So this is min term five. This is two. min term two, zero, one, zero. This is min term seven, one, one, one. So this is min term seven, or, Zero, zero, 001 so it is min term 1 so it is sum of min terms 1 2 5 7 and if you try to draw the k map as a function of x y z bar Z bar, Z bar, yes. So this is essentially four. Masbrot, I four, Y four. So if you try to fill, it is one, two, four, and seven. So from the map, it is clear that you cannot, you can't combine any of these ones with other, other ones on the uh, map. And if you try to simplify the function using algebra, you will end up with the same result, that you cannot simplify this function any further. So now, <laughs> let's try to redefine the exclusive OR. We said the XOR is essentially, is essentially one when only one of the inputs is one. Is this true for this input? What is seven? Seven is one, one. How many ones do we have in the input? Three ones right we have three ones how many ones we have in m1 it is zero zero one in two it is zero one zero in four it is one zero zero so the definition of exclusive or is it true here here and here but it is not true here in terms of the fact only one of the inputs has to be one so what another property we can put in order to define the XOR function. Yes, I think we already mentioned that in chapter two. So the XOR function or expression is basically one, it is basically one, when the number of ones in the input is what? Is odd, when the number of ones is odd. What we said earlier about the exclusiveness is only applicable on the two input case. The input is, the output of the XOR is one when only one of the inputs is one, is only uh, specific to the two input um, case. Okay, so this is very important. And you know, the XOR is an odd, function in other words it's it is one when the number of ones in the input is odd it outputs one when the number of ones in the input is is odd when the number of ones is uh, is odd and this is very important property all right so now, if I want to do it with four variables, it will be the same. For example, um, if I have x, x, w, 
exclusive R with X, exclusive R with Y, exclusive R with Z. I can do the same. You may try to do that at home using algebra to find the logic expression, but you will end up with this, sum of min terms. What will be the min terms of the four input XOR function? Basically, this function will be one when the number of ones in the input is odd, which is number one, number two, three has two ones, right? Which is even, so it's not. Number four, five is not, because five is, what is five? It is zero, one, zero, one. The number of ones is even. Number six is not, the number of ones in six binary is not odd. Seven, eight, nine, لا. التسعة بالبinary one, zero, zero, one. So the number of ones is even. So nine, uh, is not an intern. 10, 10 is 1010, one, zero, one, zero. so it is not. 11, 1011, one, one. so it is 11. 12, 1110. One, one, zero. Zero. Um, camera got stuck. All right, sorry about that. So uh, uh, these are the min terms that contain odd number of ones. If you convert them to binary, they will contain odd number of ones. 12 is this, it is one, one, zero. It has even number of ones. 13 is this. So we have 13. 14 is this, so it is, and 15 is all ones, which are four ones. So that's it. If you draw the K-map, of this, which is W, X, Y, Z, we have min term one, min term two, min term four, min term seven, min term eight, min term 11, min term 13, min term 14. So this is the key map, and if you look at the map, at the map, you can't combine any of these ones with other ones that are on the map. <coughs> Excuse me. And basically, if you look at the binary value of each of these min terms, this is four, one, two, seven, eight, uh, uh, eleven, thirteen, fourteen. Which what I did here you'll find that this function is one when only the number of ones is odd. It is odd for 11, it is odd for 13, it is odd for 14, and so on. For one, two, four, and seven, and eight. Okay, so if I ask you, what are the min terms? What are the min terms for a five input XOR operation? You do the same. You basically look for the, the numbers that have odd number of ones, that have odd number of of ones. So there is a problem today with the internet connection. There's some delay. Okay. So this is for the XOR. So the XOR is an odd function. What about the XNOR? What do you think? The XNOR is basically the complement of the XOR. So if the XOR is odd, is odd function, how about the XNOR? It will be an even function it will be an even 
فانكشن اي نو عمار بس يعني هلا كويس تهيألي ولا لا اوكي خليني ليت مي تراي تو فيكس ات اوكي انا اضطريت انزل الريزوليوشن تبع الكاميرا يمكن شوي الصوره بليرد بس ليتس تراي تو ورك ات اوت سو فور ذا اكس نور صار في بروبلم هي المشكله يعني بالنت ما في بروبلم ويز الانترنت Okay. Uh, and I have to know the yes. Now, I'm to the resolution. Um, let me try. All right. So, the can the XOR? If the XOR is an odd function, then the XNOR is basically an even uh, function. Will be an even uh, function. In other words, if I ask you, what are the min terms for X? X nor Y X nor Z. The min terms will be the inputs which has even number of ones, which are the zero, three, what else? Zero, three, five, and six. Zero, three, five, and six. So the K map will be something like this. Which are min term zero, min term three, min term five, and min term six, and basically these are the zeros of the XOR, and now they are the ones of the X nor. This is min term zero, three, five, and six. Um. Okay. 
Okay, so these are the uh, uh, min terms of the XNOR. How about the min terms for for input? XNOR, they will be sum of min terms. They will be zero, three, five, six, nine, 10, 12, and 15, right? Because all of these values have even number of ones in their binary representation. So this is basically what I wanted to add for the other types of gates for the XOR and the XNOR. Now, where we can use this fact, the fact that uh, the XOR is odd function and the XNOR is even function. We already discussed that in chapter two, which is basically to generate the parity, to generate the parity. For example, we said, if you want to design a circuit that outputs the parity for a three input number. So this is A, B, C and we want to output the parity of this number so that we send it to the other side. So we want to output the parity, and then we want, once we output the parity, we want to send it along with the data to the other, to some other side. Now, if this parity is the odd parity, in other words, this parity bit has to be one when the number of ones in the input is what? Even. What is the circuit that has to be used inside this box? If this parity is odd parity, we want to generate the odd parity. In other words, this bit, this bit has to be one. This bit has to be one when the number of ones is even, and it has to be zero when the number of ones is odd. What is this function that gives this P? What will be inside this box? When X nor. It is X nor because we want an even parity generator. In other words, when the number of ones, when the number of ones is even, we want the output to be one. So what is this function? It is an even function, but it generates the odd parity. This is very important. It is the opposite. So what we have here is basically three input XNOR gates. We have three input XNOR gates, because the XNOR will have is, is one when the number of ones is even, and this is basically how the even or the odd or the odd parity works. Now, if this goes to some other, to the other side, and now we want to check whether we, we want to have a circuit that tells us if there is an error. So this is A, B, C parity. So now we have a system, we want a system that tells us if there is an error in the received data. And when the, how do we know if there is an error here? We assume that the parity is odd. So if the number of ones is not odd, is not odd, we want the error to be one. So if the number of ones is even, which means that some error has occurred during the, uh, the, the trip from this point to this point, we want this error to be one. So what is the function that gives us one when the number of ones here is even? It is also x nor. So whenever the number of ones here is even, the error is one, and this is what we want because we sent, when we sent the data, the number of ones was assumed to be odd, assuming odd parity uh, convention. 
So the same thing to check to check for the error, we need an XOR for input XOR. We need to take the parity into consideration. So here we have odd parity generator, which is basically an even function. And here we have an odd parity checker, which is also an even function. What about the even parity generator? What will be the function that you can you need to use to generate the even parity? Basically, you need a function that takes a certain number of inputs and output parity. And this parity is one when the number of ones is odd to make the total number of ones even. So this will be XOR and the check will be also using for input X or to give us the error. So they are the opposite. For odd parity generation, you need an even function. For odd parity checking, you need an even function. For even parity generation, you need an odd function. For even parity check checking, you need an even an odd function which is the XOR, okay? دكتور مش لما ضفنا الفريتي صار عدد الـ ones odd ما كانوا even بس ضفت واحد بيصير odd عندي شكر هون؟ اه يس اوكي so this is how we generate the odd parity so the number of ones are assumed to be odd here how can we check if the number of ones is odd or not? We want a circuit that tells us if the number of ones are not odd, output here one. So what is the circuit that tells if the number of ones is not odd, then it is even. So if we want a circuit that tells us if the number of ones is not odd, or in other words, the number of ones is even, to output one. So what is this circuit? X0. X0. The same thing or the opposite is in the even parity uh, convention. Okay, so this is very uh, important. Okay, okay. The last thing in this subsection is very important. Also, concept, which is a try state buffer this one we did not talk about in chapter uh, in chapter two and this is a new type of gate this gate is very simple but it's very important gate the logic symbol of this gate is something like this it is a triangle, something like this, which has one input X, it has one output, let's say F. However, this, circuit, this gate has another input, which sometimes we call it E or enable, or sometimes they call it C for control. E for enable, or C, sometimes they write it for uh, uh, control. So this is basically a gate that has two inputs and has one output. Now, how does this circuit, this gate work? Basically, this circuit has two inputs, E and X or C and X and one output. Now, given this diagram, this circuit is very simple. Whenever we have four basic, basically we have four input combinations, one, zero, one, one. Now, when the, when the E input is one, then basically F is the same as X. So if X is zero, F is zero. If X is one, F is also one. F is also one.
f is also one. Now, so in this part of the table, f equals x. When e or the circuit or the gate is enabled, in other words, e is one, then basically f is the same as x. Very simple. What happens when we make E equals zero? In other words, the gate is disabled. Here the gate we say is enabled. It is enabled in the sense it allows X to pass through so that F is basically X. Now, when the circuit is disabled, it means that we will prevent X from reaching to the output. So we will disconnect the input from the output. So what is F? We don't want to allow F to follow X. In other words, F is not X. What will be F when the circuit or the gate is disabled? Zero. What? Zero. Zero. Why not one? There is nothing coming in. We cannot assume it is zero. We cannot assume it's one. Exactly. So what we are doing here, when the circuit, when E equals one, Basically, this is what we have. X is connected to F. It is simply a wire. When E equals zero, X is not connected to F. So the path between X and F is opened. So can we say here that F is zero? If it's not connected to X, can we say F is one? No, physically in physics, if f is not connected to x, we cannot say that f is defined. We say f is not defined. If we are talking about voltage, uh, 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 for example, if logic zero is zero volt, logic five, logic one is five volt, we can't, we can't say that f is zero when it's not connected to x. We can say f is, is five volt when it is not connected to x. What is the voltage of F? What is the logic value of F? Basically, it's not defined. And how we express this? We say Z zeta, capital zeta, which means high resistance. There is high resistance between X and F. That's why the voltage of X cannot reach, cannot reach to the to point F or to the output. If it is high resistance, if you put a very high resistance in some circuit in physics, can the current pass through if the, if the resistance is infinity? What is the current? The, the current is V divided by R. If R is infinity, V over infinity is zero so there is no current there is no connection between this point and this point in other words here r goes to infinity so we disconnect the input from the output so this is not a value basically there is no event there is no value called zeta we are working with binary system so we either have a value of zero or a value of one. So what does zeta imply? Zeta imply it is high impedance or high, high resistance. There is no connection between the input and the output. In other words, the gate is disabled. When the enable input is one, there is a connection between the input and the output. And we say the gate is enabled or the circuit is enabled. So this is what we call a tri-state buffer. Why it is called the tri-state? State, what is the meaning of state? Hale <laughs> or value, let's say. A tri, it means a three. So this state has a three possible, this gate has three possible states. 
it can be one, it can be zero, or it can be nothing, undefined. It's not connected. So we have three states for this, uh, for this uh, gate. But this is not a value. Again, it means there is no connection between the input and the output. Now, what is the advantage where we can use such gate? It is a very important gate when it comes to connecting uh, different logic systems or digital systems together. When we want different systems to connect, to communicate with each other, we need, uh, this gate is, becomes very useful. Let's take a very simple scenario to, to appreciate the importance of this gate. Let's say that we want, we have two digital systems. We have system A, we have system B. And these two systems want to communicate with system C. They can send one bit, A can send one bit to C, B can send one bit to C. How can we do that? The straightforward approach is to have a wire connect to connect A to C and another wire to connect B to C. So A can send data to C, B can send data to C. But this is this is the most log the, this is the simplest and the trivial approach to do this. Okay. However, it's it might become very expensive if we have let's say 100 systems that want to communicate with C then in this case we need 100 wires and this is very, could be very expensive. Now what solution we can have in order to reduce the cost of these wires? Basically, we can say instead of having a wire for each sender, we, why not to have a single wire? We have a single wire here and this single wire can be used to send data between A and C and B and C, but it is shared. So this wire, we can connect to this point if we want A to communicate with C, or we can connect it to this point if we want to uh, B, if we want B to communicate with uh, C. Okay, well, the arm is up to me now. Okay, so um, yeah, في مشكلة على الإنترنت اليوم. Okay, so to reduce the cost of the wires, instead of having a wire from A to C and a wire from B to C, why not to have a single wire that can be used by both A and B? But A and B, we cannot have both B, A and B talking to C at the same time because their, their data can will collide or C cannot know which data is from which uh, sender. So basically, we either connect this to A or to B. Either we connect to here or we connect to here and we ask A to send to C uh, or B to send to C. So basically, this is called sharing. We are, we are, as, we are, uh, we are allowing A and B to share the same connection or the same wire to communicate data by simply moving this switch. Either we connect here or we connect here. Okay, now this is a mechanical switch. We don't want mechanical switch. 
we don't want to use our hand to connect to here or to connect to here in digital systems. We want everything to be digital. We want everything to be controlled by electronics. So how we can do that? Here, uh, here comes the rule of tri-state buffers. We can have A connected to a tri-state buffer, and we have B connected to another tri-state buffer, and both are connected, are sharing this. And here we have this control, and this is the control. Now, this is the E input for this gate, and this is the E input for this gate. Now, if we want to connect A to C, we simply set this to one and this to zero. B will be disconnected because zero on E implies that this is open. There is no connection, right? And one on E here implies that this is connected like this. So A is connected to C and this is very high resistance. So B, the value of B cannot pass through to C. The opposite is true. If you want to connect B to C and isolate or disconnect A, you set this to zero and you set this to one. So this becomes a short circuit. So it is connected and this one becomes open circuit. So A is isolated or disconnected and B is the one that is, that is connected. So this is very useful. It allows multiple systems to share the same connection with another system. And this is what you have on your computer system. Inside your computer, you have men, money, multiple subsystems on the board inside your computer. And all of these systems, they communicate using a single channel or a single connection. So how can you make sure that only two of these systems is talking to each other at any instant of time? Basically, you need to isolate the remaining subsystems. And how you isolate the remaining subsystems? Basically, by using tri-state buffers state buffers so in the digital in your digital computer you have uh, on board you have system a you have system b you have system c you have system d you have system f and all of them they can communicate with either which is which is which, which each with each other Instead of having a dedicated wire between each of these subsystems, for example, A can communicate with all of them, so you need a wire, a wire, a wire, a wire, a wire. C can communicate with all of these subsystems, you need a wires, wires, wires. So now we have one connection, which we call it the main bus or main connection, and each connect to this wire, in order to communicate with some other side. But if C wants to talk to F, you need to isolate or disconnect A, B, and D. So how you do that? Basically, you have a tri-state buffer here, 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 and your system only decides or determines which of these tri-state buffers to enable in order to allow any of these two entities or subsystems to communicate with each other. So this is very important gate that is used extensively in computer systems and digital systems in sharing. We are, we, have, we are sharing this wire here. All we call it multiplexing. You need to multiplex. Multiplexing means sharing in digital systems. This wire is called, is multiplexed. We say it is multiplexed, it is shared between multiple systems. How do you guarantee that only two of these subsystems are using this shared channel or this shared uh, connection or multiplexed connection? Basically by using tri-state buffers. You enable two of these tri-state buffers at a time and disable the remaining tri-state buffers to make any two subsystems communicate to each other. All right.
Okay, so next time we'll take a few examples on this tri-state buffer uh, uh, thing. Then we will move to chapter uh, uh, four, we will, where we will start uh, designing and designing uh, digital uh, combinational logic systems or combinational logic uh, circuits. Okay, um, I have a couple of announcements. Uh, I sent you uh, a notice on the system regarding a quiz number two. So quiz number two will be this Wednesday. Uh, we will use uh, the e-learning system. So uh, by the end of the lecture, before we uh, finish the lecture, let's say, before five minutes or 10 minutes, we will, uh, all of us should log into the e-learning system. Then we go to the uh, virtual classroom where we find quiz, a link for quiz number two. Okay, so we click on that, we click start, then we can, you can do the quiz. It will be a very simple uh, quiz. Um, so please make sure to, uh, uh, to attend Wednesday lecture in order to do uh, the quiz. This is very important for people who are not showing up uh, to the live lectures. Uh, yes, it will be two. it will be chapter two only. It will be chapter two uh, only. So it is basically about uh, Boolean algebra and the min terms and the max terms, sum of min terms and uh, product of max terms and the other types of gates, the uh, the NOR gate, the NAND gate, XOR and XNOR gates that we discussed in chapter uh, two. Uh, uh, so it seems that the current situation will continue for a few uh, weeks to come. At least we have the next week and the week after. So probably we will have another quiz before we, uh, in the coming two weeks. So quiz number three will be most likely not next week, the week after it. and. I will announce about it at that time. The second announcement that I want to make, uh, like because the current situation might continue like this for more than two weeks, the university asked us uh, to do as many uh, assignments, uh, quizzes, uh, projects, whatever stuff we can, whatever type of assessments we can do in order uh, to evaluate and assess your performance in the courses. So uh, I decided with the, uh, I discussed this issue with the, the other instructors and we decided to start having homeworks, okay? So uh, uh, every other week we will have a homework. So starting this week, uh, today or by tomorrow, uh, I will post homework number one. Uh, you need to solve this homework on a piece of paper. Then once you finish, you take a, a, a photo for it. Um, and I prefer that you do that using a software called CamScan. CamScan allows you to take a scan of your paper. So you scan that paper and then you upload it with you through e-learning and the TA will grade uh, these uh, uh, homeworks. So when you use the CAM scan, if you have multiple papers, you take all these, uh, 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 a scan of all of these papers, then you combine them into one PDF file and you upload this PDF file to you uh, through e-learning. In the assignment section, once I do that, I will post the instructions how to do that uh, so I will give you maybe a few questions. You do them on a piece of paper, uh, then you scan them and upload them through e-learning. We need to have as many uh, like assessments as we can because we don't know how things will go. We might not be able to go to university before 1st of May. And if that happens, we only have very limited time to do exams 
So it might be restricted to doing a final exam only and relying on whatever assignments and quizzes we do online. However, if we go to the university, if we go back to the university, um, uh, before 1st of May, we might be able to do a midterm exam in addition to the final exam. And in addition, uh, and in, in addition uh, uh, to the assignments that we do online. Fakhir, uh, uh, you missed the first quiz. Uh, it will not affect your uh, grade unless you miss another quiz. Because we agreed at the beginning of the semester that we will have four quizzes and we will drop the, uh, the lowest of the four. So basically we take the highest three. So make sure to attend the remaining quizzes and to do well in them. Hey, Doctor, can you tell us how to get the exam? Uh, through the e-learning system. Uh, the e-learning system, uh, 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 when you do the login on the e-learning, you will enter the data that we have. You will find that there is a virtual classroom. Here, I will put a link to the quiz. You can press on it. It will open the quiz online. So you will fill it online on the screen and you will do submit. خلاص تمام مش تمام تمام يعني انا يعني بدي اكد على شغلي هون انا بعرف انه الكويز اونلاين وانه انتم شايفين بعض من ورا ظهري فيو كان دو وات ايفر يو وونت بس هي شغله اثكس الان هي شغله فائده يعني الكويز ممكن يكون مالتيبل تشويس ممكن يكون شورت انسرز والاسئله راح تكون كثيره يعني السيستم بياخذ من بول من الاسئله فالاسئله اللي بتطلع لعندك مش شرط بالضروره تكون نفس الاسئله اللي بتطلع عند صاحبك وحتى لو نفس السؤال بتكون الارقام مختلفه، الخيارات مختلفه فبغض النظر حتى لو الاسئله ما بتتغير او الخيارات ما بتتغير شغله هي افكس وشغله فائده تمام؟ هي شغله افكس وشغله فائده يعني لإلك يعني في النهايه رح رح نسوي فاينل اكزام على ارض الواقع والفاينل اكزام ممكن يكون 70% من العلامه اذا رجعنا على الجامعه بعد 1/5 هيك التوجه ف 70% مش قلال فاذا انت مش جاهز وغشيت هالكوزات وهالهوم وركات يعني مش رح تقدر تسوي يعني كويس بالفاينل موست لايكلي فلمصلحتك ولفائدتك يعني حاول تسوي هالهوم وركس والكوزز بجهدك الشخصي حتى تكون جاهز للفاينل مش بسهوله داليا نقدر نسوي الميد تيرم والميد تيرم كوزنه كبير الميد تيرم 30 علامه يعني احنا بنحكي كويز يعني وزنه قليل ف يعني ممكن نجرب فيه بس ميد تيرم شوي صعبه بس اني anyway واي يعني ستيل الجامعه ما قررت بشكل نهائي كيف اليه التقييم النهائيه لكن ربنا يجيب اللي في خير ان شاء الله تنتهي هالازمه وهالفتره ال الاستثنائية على خير إن شاء الله نقدر نرجع على الجامعة بس يعني for the time being خلينا يعني نحاول نسوي as يعني as many homeworks as many quizzes as we can حتى نقلل من الويت اللي ممكن نحط على الفاينل في النهاية أوكي وباكد على نقطة انه ضروري الكل يحاول انه يسوي الهوم وركس آه وبالذات الهوم وركس اون هيز اون يعني بمجهوده الشخصي بايده يسويهم والكويزز يعني موست لايكلي يعني الغش فيها راح يكون صعب آه وانا يعني زي ما حكيت دائما بثق بالطالب يعني الطالب اللي بيعرف مصلحته يعني هو اللي بقرر يعني يعني كيف يسوي هالكويزات اوكي فيوم الاربعاء آه راح يكون في نهايه الحصه الكويز آه ما راح يبين عندك غير لما انا اسوي له انيبل فبس لما آه في نهايه الحصه راح اطلب منك انه خلينا ندخل على الاي ليرنينج كلنا مع بعض ووقتها بتقدر تشوف الكويز بالسكشن تبع الفيرتشوال كلاس روم اوكي وبتمنى من الحاضر يعلم الغايب يعني اللي بيعرف حدا من اصحابه آه آه ما بيحضر سواء لايف او ريكوردد رجاءا يخبروا انه في كويزز رح يصير
دكتور ممكن سؤال؟ يس بنقدر نعرف علامات الكويز الاول ولا امتى بيطلع ولا لا والله هم يس هم جاهزين بحطهم اليوم ان شاء الله اوكي تمام اوكي بحطهم ب في بدايه الصفحه فوق بيكونوا موجودين في الاناونسمنت اوكي اوكي ماشي يعطيكم العافيه نراكم الاربعاء ان شاء الله